Hello everyone, today we're looking at a game from the 2012 Chess Olympiad which was played in um, Istanbul. And this is between the strong South African I am Mr. Watikubisi and Kirill Dimitrov Georgiev, a guy that's nearly a, a super GM, so a very, very strong opponent. And we we have an e4, knight to 6 we have an Alyekheim with e5, knight d5, and simply knight f3, and d6 containing for that center, and a sideline, bishop c4. And I, after knight b6, bishop b3, I was already looking at this position and thinking, why haven't I ever played this line before? Um, because usually I, I end up pushing these pawns into the center, black brings out his knights, I overextend, I lose a few pawns in the center, those knights end up on outposts, and I lose. So, okay, first I was impressed by this sideline, now knight c6, and I was even more impressed by this move, queen e2, a novelty played by Watsukubisi. And this move is actually very intuitive. Um, it's, it's just guarding this pawn for the center, but it's also closing up the center, which we'll see for practical reasons is very necessary in this, in this game. Um, if you, for instance, just take this pawn, I don't believe this queen is that bad. Trying to get rid of it with F through F6 will just open up this diagonal, and black probably just needs to try and trade off queens immediately. But this is not the worst queen in the center ever, because uh, these, this knight isn't around to kick it away anymore, and this knight is contained and far away. So, okay. After the move queen e2, instead of capturing that pawn, uh, George F goes bishop f5, developing a piece. And now we really see what Watt's idea is. a4, not even going for one of these central pawns, uh, which could be a weakness later on in, in White's camp, but going a4, and actually threatening to kick away this knight, who has already spent three moves getting to the square. So already being a pretty annoying opponent there, Watu. And then e6, trying to get castled. You should probably do that in a chess game, try and get your king safe. And now a5, kicking away that knight. Um, knight, knight d5 drops a pawn, so uh, you can just capture the, the knight, and after this captures, it comes with check and you pick up this pawn. So instead in the game, after a5, we saw knight d7. So, okay, now what you push is the pawn for the third time, and this time it's, it's done to uh, mess up black's pawn structure. Uh, of course, how to deal with this? Uh, b6 is probably the way you want to play if you want to keep your pawn structure alive, but now you've got this big weakness in your, in your camp. So bishop a4, playing very sound. Um, these are, these moves all are very natural and they, they come in mind with one another. Now this diagonal is very weak. After the e6 pawn is on the board, uh, this diagonal is no longer of any use. Instead, uh, this diagonal, uh, the, the a4, e8 diagonal can be used just to uh, paralyze black's position and make it very awkward for him to develop. Although Watts hasn't completed developing himself, he's just making things as awkward as possible for his opponent to develop naturally. So, okay, his opponent goes for this pawn, he's just given up, and knight takes e5, and now just queen takes e5. His opponent realizes he can take the pawn on c2. Uh, you seriously don't want to go to capture this, this bishop, and maybe ask yourself why. And so instead, just bishop c6, because taking the bishop yourself is also just as big a threat. And okay, the, the rook isn't hanging for the time being, um, because then the queen would hang. And black could actually go, uh, black could actually go for uh, bishop c5 now, trying to get castled. And this is, this is according to the computers, the best way to have played this, comp this position. Um, I'll get to why it's possible. Uh, if white goes d4, trying to play with tempo against this bishop, black can simply castle immediately. And now white needs to get rid of the knight uh, because the, it's not pinned anymore and the queen's under attack. So getting rid of the knight, black can simply go queen takes. And in fact, this bishop isn't hanging uh, because of queen d1 checkmate. So uh, bishop uh, after, after bishop c6, Bishop f5 was uh, really the strongest option here for George F to go. But since White has been playing such uh, paralyzing moves and making it as awkward as possible for Black to develop, this type of development would have required a lot of calculation. And so uh, George F goes for something that's even more awkward, but more straightforward to play. Just Bishop f5. And he wants to prepare f6 just to kick away the queen and then free up his position. Uh, but now, okay. Nothing's threatened, so Watu just develops a piece. He also, this knight is actually stronger than this bishop, so he uses the opportunity not to trade this piece. Also, the knight can come into the, the game now and target c7. Uh, now, simply, we see f6. This was the idea 
from uh, uh, George F's side. But Queen E2, such a strong move. Also possible was Queen B4, uh, just to say that Black's King needs to stay around to defend uh, the knight, or or you need to play E5 and concede uh, big weaknesses on these diagonals. But Queen E2 has got a different uh, idea in mind. Um, uh, it's actually planning G4, and then E6 is going to drop. So Black goes King F7 for the time being, giving up the exchange, but but uh, what it doesn't even want this exchange he just goes d4 this bishop is way more worth than this rook he realizes that and d4 is another paralyzing move and taking away the squares of this knight and also possible good squares for the bishop and saying that black's development is very awkward and now we see uh, rook c8 he's deciding to hold on to the exchange and it's actually at this point uh, that he shouldn't have he should have tried uh, bishop g4 instead and now he gets crushed let's see how Okay, simply what to castles, uh, always a sound sound idea, and now knight b8. You can realize that this knight didn't have any other squares to go to. Knight b8 is kind of necessary if you want to start playing on the d file and, and start bringing your pieces out. Um, but simply bishop b7, what to decides that he doesn't want to fianchetto the bishop on g2, he wants to fianchetto it uh, right in your camp, uh, close to your rook, where you can always recapture your rook. So he fianchettos his bishop, and now bishop b4. Uh, safer bet would have been bishop d6, but small nuances. Now what he goes for his idea, finally, g4 uh, and G bishop g6. His idea of going g4 was to go d5, and these two ideas also go in mind. And we see Watu actually has a very holistic idea of, of which moves fit together with which other moves. Um, instead, okay, this is just a computer line, but instead of uh, a stronger idea, instead of uh, e5 would have been to go after this pawn on a7, which would mean that you've always got this pass pawn and probably the rook is definitely lost. But e5, a concrete way of playing against uh, this positional weakness um, on e6. So after d5, black captures the pawn. We've got knight takes and now rook e8 going off the queen. And strong players play these types of uh, tempo moves. For the time leaving the bishop to hang and attacking the queen, but knowing that after the queen moves to c4, he can actually defend this bishop with his rook. And the idea is actually that there aren't any good discoveries uh, for the queen to use because the queen just gets, uh, the queen gets chopped. So simply uh, what holds onto the tension of the discovery. And this is actually quite cool because he allows, he allows rook, takes, uh, rook takes g4 check, knowing the king is safe on h1. Bishop, bishop e4 doesn't work because of f3, and this fork is devastating. Also, can't even capture there because this comes with check. And you're getting slaughtered on these light squares. Uh, so don't, don't even try that check yourself, because uh, it's actually, in fact, black that's weak on the, um, on the light squares. So instead, you, he's not, he doesn't hold on to his bishop. Uh, Georgiev just goes king f8, because now this discovery is coming and there's nothing to do. And now the move. Uh, just knight takes b4, picking up a piece, c5, and it's actually the game is kind of over from here. Uh, just some good coordination still. Uh, you don't want to allow this type of counterplay because um, this is kind of still a threat in Black's mind. So now uh, knight d5, still making use of, of this fork uh, idea. Uh, knight c6, though, a good move, trying to stop communication. Now, now bishop uh, e4 is a stronger idea worth taking on d5, but what to play soundly, he goes knight f4, and even this re-maneuvering comes with tempo. He's coming to e6, and this is a devastating move to have to deal with. So simply queen d7 in the game, and he finds a way to tra trade down queens, queen e6. And this isn't just a queen trade, this also still bears in mind that he can pick up the rook. Uh, capturing the queen now would walk to check and then taking the rook, so you're going to be down a lot of material. So bishop f5 is there to hold on to some material. Tactically, this doesn't work though. After bishop takes c8, and Watu is a tactical genius, he just goes for this. Uh, the idea is that, okay, you can't capture the queen first because of knight takes with check, and you can always recapture. And then black is traded down even more material. So instead, after bishop takes c8, you need to try queen takes c8, but then simply just queen takes c8 check, bishop takes c8, and f3. And the game is, is swiftly over from here. Because now, what is up a full rook? And, okay, maybe black could have resigned, but uh, there's sometimes players make blunders. We all know that. Um, you don't, you've got the right to continue playing. Uh, so, uh, sorry, c4, king of two. 
Um, it is root g1 check. It's in this position, sorry, uh, that Watu finds a clever way to pick up a pawn uh, after king h7. He just takes the pawn on f6. Uh, you can't recapture the, the bishop because of uh, this checkmate <laughs> in two. A, a very cool way to pick up a pawn, bishop takes f6. So just rook f7, uh, bishop c3. And the last time something is threatened on the board, just make sure you don't lose that knight, king e3. And bring your last your rook into the game. Now you're up a rook, definitely. Your rook is in the position. Black's feeling it after knight c6 and bishop takes g7 and resigns. Point being that, okay, white is just coming in into the position and there's no stopping this. You can't even go uh, rook takes g7 because of this uh, rook d7 check. And white trades down and he plays up a bunch load of material. A great game by our international master, Watch could BC. Really just a chess legend. And coming up with such a nice novelty, I'm definitely going to employ this in my own play. I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. And uh, remember to hit that subscribe button like you would hit the chess lock. Just smash away at it. And I'll see you guys soon for another video. Enjoy your day.